Hey guys, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Today's episode is presented by our friends at Compassion International. They have been such a wonderful partner with us here at Sports Spectrum, and we are so glad to tell you and to continue to tell you about the work that they are doing, releasing children from poverty. And we talked about COVID-19 impacting 70,000 potential families, kids stuck in this pandemic without a sponsorship through Compassion, and you guys have rallied. You really have. Fillthestadium.com is the website, and y'all have went there, and I'm telling you, we are close to releasing 70,000 kids from poverty and their families through this pandemic. want to continue to encourage you to give. If you haven't given yet, man, pray about it and think about a place where you can go and you know your money is going to impact a child and their family, potentially for eternity, because compassion is releasing kids from poverty in Jesus' name. They keep the name of Jesus into the work that they do. So consider going to fillthestadium.com and donate. Any amount of money helps, but this is a stadium that cannot remain empty. Let's fill this stadium and go to fillthestadium.com and release children from poverty with Compassion International. This is Sports Spectrum, the intersection of sports and faith, where we bring Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Jason, and this is Sports Spectrum's podcast. Check out our website, sportspectrum.com, for all of our content, devotionals, articles, podcasts, you name it, bringing Jesus back into the sports conversation. You can listen to and watch and read right there at Sports Spectrum. And when you're at the website, you'll see an icon at the top called newsletter. Click that icon, you put in your email address, and you're in for our Sports Spectrum newsletter. It's a weekly newsletter, really an email that comes to you once a week. We don't flood your inbox and just kind of update you on all that we have going on at Sports Spectrum. Again, the articles and the stories, the podcasts, the devotionals that you may have missed you can get them delivered right to your email inbox when you sign up for our newsletter over at sportspectrum.com. And if you have an, a guest idea or a topic that you want us to cover, you can reach me directly and email me, jason at sportspectrum.com. That's my email. It's real simple. It comes right to me, jason at sportspectrum.com. All right, want to get to our conversation today with Clayton Carlin. He is the Sam Houston State defensive coordinator, also coaching safeties with Sam Houston State. And he was a part of a team with the Bearcats that won the 2020 FCS National Championship in college football. Ironically, the 2020 FCS National Championship was played in May of 2021 because of COVID. But Sam Houston State and Clayton Carlin had an amazing season going a perfect 10 and 0 and playing that season from February to May and then culminating with a last minute win over South Dakota State to win the FCS National Championship just a few months ago and now they got to turn around and get ready for 2021. So Clayton talks about his journey as a coach. He also talks about his walk with Jesus and the impact that his dad Leo Carlin had on him a man who worked with the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL for 55 years. Clayton Carlin's dad working with the Eagles, and that would, I'm guessing, have a big influence on him going into coaching and the game of football. You're going to love Clayton Carlin and his story from Sam Houston State, and it's right now on Sports Day. Coach Carlin, how are you? Doing great, Jason. Honored to be here with you today. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So glad that you reached out and we connected and now we get to do an actual interview and I get to hear a little bit about your journey. Um, let's start, first of all, with this. I mean, you open up the 2021 seasons coming up very soon, September 2nd at Northern Arizona, uh, but you just yeah. finished an incredible 2020 season in May of 2021, like I said, winning the College Football FCS National Championship. So first of all, congrats to you. Um, describe how it feels to be a part of a team that goes undefeated and wins a title and, and wins a title in a pretty dramatic way as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, appreciate you asking. And it was a dramatic with the whole the whole playoff run was dramatic, Jason. Each 
playoff game came down to the final play. Yeah. And uh, so a tribute, and, and, and we just love our players. We have a great bunch of young men that are really obviously very talented on the field, but so selfless and committed. And uh, the things they had to go through to, to, to walk away with that national championship trophy are, are, are so inspiring. And obviously we've all been dealing with COVID uh, but on top of that, you know, our season was was postponed. And that was the key thing. We thought it was postponed. It wasn't canceled. For, so it was just postponed. And that's right. And then, and then we're about to open up in February. I forget what the date was. And then Texas gets hit with this major ice storm and snowstorm, which you don't get in Texas. So now our players, four or five days before we're supposed to open up, no, no food, no water. Oh. You know, every, no power, no water for four or five days. So you deal with that. And then on top of that, we have no football facility because there's a renovation going on. So we're getting this beautiful facility. that's going to be done shortly. So our kids, it's like little league football. They're getting dressed in the stands, carrying their equipment, doing their own laundry. So uh, it was really impressive to, to, to be part of, uh, of such a great group of young men and, uh, the overwhelming feeling I had, Jason, when 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 that final second went off the, the clock against South Dakota State was, uh, you know, we were on the field defensively. We had to stop them a couple more plays to 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 end to end it, and uh, yeah. just just an overwhelming sense of gratitude. You know, I, I was just so grateful to be to be just such a, a small part of a, a national championship group. Grateful for my walk with the Lord, grateful uh, for my wife and our, and our, and our children. And I, I was just overcome with such, such gratitude. And I remember, and you can see it on film when the last second took off or, or ticked off. I, I just took a knee. I took a knee because again, I just overcome with such gratitude. And I just calmly walked down. I knew where my wife and the children were sitting and, uh, just walked over to them and found them and was able to give them the, the first group hug. So uh, yeah, it, w- yeah. it was uh, overwhelmingly grateful. Well, it's what you always dream of as a coach, right? Is to go on, first of all, to go undefeated and win a title, which is very uh, not common, I would say, in sports today. I mean, you're usually losing a couple games here and there, but you all ran the table and went 10-0. and 0. Um, You mentioned the FCS playoff run. Saw you in four straight close games with the largest margin of victory being by six points. Uh, yeah. You beat number one seed James Madison by three. You beat number two seed South Dakota State in the title game by two in that exciting game, 23-21. Yeah. I need to ask you as a coach, how are you able to control your emotions when you play in games like these that mean so much and are close right to the end? Because I know you have a job to do. But we all can get caught up, especially if you're a fan in the stands or watching on television and your emotions are getting the best of you. In some cases, you can't even look. You turn away. But you got a job to do. But yet these games are right down the wire. How do you kind of control your emotions? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, it's the you know, you're you're certainly rattling inside. There's no no doubt about that. And um, with every game coming down to the last play, I think it's I think it's really important as a coach. And I've been around some. I've been blessed to be around some of the best coaches in the business, in, in, in my opinion. And one of the many things I've learned along the way is keeping an even keel and keeping your poise during the game when things maybe are going against you or, or down to the last play. And, yeah. and there's the old saying, I mean, you, you, you will get what they see. And, you know, I saw, hopefully our players see me and, and, and the other great guys that I work with and they see poise and they see calm and they see confidence. And uh, so it's not easy to, to stay like that, but uh, it's fortunately I've been doing this for a few years now and, and being able to, to keep that even feel. And now you have the quickest off season. I think that hopefully we'll ever see um, playing the national title game on May 16th. And then less than four months later, you're starting a new season on Thursday night, September 2nd. That's, one quick turnaround, Clayton. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a heck of a challenge, and uh, so that's the next challenge. Uh, you know, our we'll start training camp August third. Uh, so, fortunately, we have you know a really great strength coach and in, 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 in Parker Whiteman, and he'll do a great job with them. And uh, you know, we'll 
we'll be ready. We got a great group of kids and who, who, who will work hard and uh, we'll go back at it. As you and I spoke before we started recording, there's no blueprint to this. So what is the adjustment, right? What's the big adjustment that you normally would have in a regular year that you don't get in a year like this, where your turnaround is less than three, four months here? Yeah. Well, the big adjust, if things were normal, our players would have reported back, uh, you know, late, late May, you know, or, or June 1st. We've been here summer, summer one, and then go from there and then be working like crazy. And then all the way up until camp and so now the big thing's going to be, like, like we said, Jason, there's no playbook for this. So is making sure they're, they're rested and, and recover, but get, getting them ready to go. And uh, Coach Keeler, our head coach, does a really good job of taking care of our guys. And we, we, we're efficient in how we practice, efficient in how we work out. And we do no live work during training camp or ever during practice. So... It's, uh, it's unknown. It's, it's, it's unknown. But uh, I think with, with our great group of young men, I think we'll, we'll be okay. What was the hardest thing about 2020 for you and the pivot that we all had to make in life? But as a coach, what was the most difficult part of last year for you? Uh, just, just the ups and the downs and, 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 and the routine you lost from a professional standpoint. But the biggest challenge for me personally, when it first hit, the, I'm naive. I thought, okay, this will, you know, we'll be off schedule here a couple of weeks and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be back at it before we know it. And this will all be gone and we'll be ready to go. And, yeah. you know, the biggest thing I, I, I missed was just being around the players, and, you know, Zoom is Zoom, but being there and being able to give them a hug and that that was the most challenging part. And you also learned and I, we talked about this with our players when we did eventually get back. Never, ever, ever take a meeting for granted again in an in-person meeting, a practice for granted, a workout in the weight room for granted again and just being around the guys and, and, and the coaches that I get to work with. And uh, so that was the challenging part, just, just that unity and being the, the team and being, and being around the coaches and, and really the players, most important. Let's take a quick break from our conversation here on Sports Spectrum to tell you a little bit more about Compassion International and our Fill the Stadium initiative. They have been great partners and sponsors with us here at Sports Spectrum. We love what Compassion stands for. We love what they are all about, releasing kids from poverty, helping children in crisis. We know about the pandemic. We know COVID has affected so many and it's affected 70,000 children and their families that were in Compassion programs as well. And so Compassion and our pro-athlete friends decided to join together and stand in the gap for those 70,000 kids, and thus Fill the Stadium was born. And our goal last year was to fill 70,000 seats, empty seats of kids in need. And here's an amazing update. So far, we've filled over 56,000 of those seats. We are almost there. We are about three quarters of the way there, but it's not a sold out stadium yet. We are trying to help 70,000 kids. So we get about 14,000 seats to go and we need your help. Check out fillthestadium.com to donate and help release these children and their family from poverty. We're talking about essential food, medical care and support for a kid and their family in need during this pandemic, you can go right now to fillthestadium.com and donate today. Fillthestadium.com. We're so glad to have Clayton Carlin here on Sports Spectrum, Sam Houston State's defensive coordinator. I want to ask you about your faith. You said your faith in the Lord. You kind of alluded to it, and you were grateful for that after you guys won the whole thing this year. Um, tell me about that faith and the importance of Jesus in your life. Well, it's certainly number one thing in my life, Jason, and uh, I just can't imagine not having it, you know, and I pray for those who don't have that walk with the Lord, and and uh, I've been blessed my whole life, and I, I, I proudly say I've been surrounded by greatness mm. uh, and great role models my whole life, and men and women of faith, and, uh, you know, it started with my mom and dad. 
you know, I was raised in a great family, one of seven. Uh, you know, my dad worked for the Philadelphia Eagles for 55 years. And uh, they just instilled in me the power of faith and walking with the Lord. And I just remember growing up, anytime a stressful situation would come along, my mom and my dad would just, just pray on it, son. Just trust in God's plan and uh, everything will be okay. And uh, so it's been that way for me for a long, long, long time. And, and uh, so, and I continue that walk every single day. All right. So let's stop for a second. I want to go deeper into the faith aspect and maybe this kind of intersects, but tell me about the job your dad had 55 years with a team is a very, very long time. It happens to be the team that my brother Chris roots for the Philadelphia Eagles. We won't tell the audience who I root for because the Eagles don't like the team that I root for. Uh, I tell hear you. <laughs> but, and you're in Texas, by the way. So that's got to yes. be quite the dynamic. But tell me about what your dad did 55 years with the Philadelphia Eagles. How, how, how about that, Jason? I, I am a one proud son and, and you understand the cutthroat world of professional sports in the National Football League. So absolutely to be able to be with an organization for 55 years. And he was the director of ticket operations. Okay. ticket manager for all those years. And uh, I pray he's in the Philadelphia Eagles hall of fame. Uh, and uh, so that, that, that's, that's what he did. And uh, he, he's uh, a, a great, one of my role models in life and just a great, I could go on for hours talking about my dad and, and my mom, but he ran the ticket department there for 55 years. So I went to quite a few Eagles games growing up. So I was blessed. Is your dad still with us? Yes, he is. Thanks for asking. I talked to him this morning. As a matter of fact, we're we're heading out uh, in a couple of days to spend two weeks with them. My mom and my dad are both 83 years old. And uh, nice. uh, we didn't get this. Like a lot of people got shook up with COVID. We didn't. We usually go every summer. We didn't yeah. get to go last year. So we were chomping at the bit to go spend some time with them here. The reason I ask is because I wanted to know what it was like for him. And I'm sure you were with him or around him when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, because that was such yes. a big deal for that city and for that franchise. But yeah. I'm thinking of the people like him. What was your dad's name, his first name? Leo. So Leo Carlin, right? 55 yeah. years with yeah. the Eagles, or at that time, 52 or whatever year it was. Yeah. Like that had to be an amazing moment to watch. Oh, uh, yeah, he was Super just, Bowl. <laughs> yeah, it was just like the whole city would go crazy. And he, he was really proud. He was, he was really proud. It was, it was a big deal. And uh, just imagine how many things he has seen go on over the course of 55 years, Jason, you know, right. and however, yeah. you know, so uh, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty cool deal. Oh my gosh. I mean, it had to be an amazing moment. I just, my brother who, like I said, has been a fan probably since the early eighties and him, the way he rejoiced as a fan and yeah. hugging his kids and just thinking, yeah. oh, my gosh, it actually happened. I can't imagine for the people who actually have been with that organization working there, you know, yeah. and for 50 plus years, it had to yeah. be such an incredible yeah. moment. Yeah, it was. It truly was. So let me ask you about watching your dad and working in a place like the Eagles and the influence that had on you to be in this football world, going into coaching, yeah. but also to live out your faith and to make yeah. that faith your own. It's one thing to have your parents' faith. It's another to make that faith in Christ your own. So take, take me through that kind of progression for you as you got older and maybe started to think about where Clayton Carlin was going to end up, you know, into yeah. your teens and early 20s. Yeah. So, you know, being around football my whole life through my dad and I would certainly be hanging around the Eagles and uh, I'll be candid with you. My mom and dad weren't too fired up when I told them I wanted to be a football coach, you know, because okay. imagine how many coaches my dad has seen come and go over the course of 55 years. Yeah. Uh, so they were, they were, you know, they weren't crazy about it, but they're unbelievably supportive over the years and they live and die with every play. So, uh, sure. uh, you know, so they're supportive, but they were, they were nervous for their son and they were scared for their son just because of the, you know, it's not the most stable profession in the world. And, uh, you know, you ask about my faith and, and, and it, again, I've never had that lightning rod moment, Jason, where, but it's just grown and being around people, my mom and dad instilled it in me. And then 
being around different coaches. And I eventually ended up at Nebraska and being around a guy like Tom Osborne and, and Turner Gill and Ron Brown and other coaches on that staff. And it just, it's constantly grown where I did make it my own. And, and, and I hope that when people, you know, I live my life and you, you, you hope that when they, they see you that, and, and hear me that they can tell that I have that, that walk with Jesus. What was it with coaching? Like why coaching? What was, what was it that, you know, had that, that's, you know, that itch that you had to scratch. Yeah. So here's a story. So I graduated from college and I have no idea what I want to do. <laughs> uh, what, what am I going to do? I want to stay in college forever. And, uh, you know, so I had my degree in communications. I'm going to get in the communications world broadcast, I'm going to do it, but I, I, I got to figure this out. So while I'm trying to figure out what my next move is, my high school coach calls me and says, while you're trying to figure out your next move, why don't you come help me be one of my assistant coaches? And uh, he's been, he was a heavy influence for me playing for him and still close with him to this day. So I went and, 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 and was one of his assistants and I just fell in love with it. I just Mm -hmm. fell in love with coaching and it didn't take me long to see that it gives you a platform to impact young people. And that, that was the thing that really drew me. You had, I have this unbelievable platform to, to hopefully influence young men through the game of football yeah. and through my, you know, I can have that platform and people can see my walk with the Lord and, 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 and see my faith and hear about my faith. So I just fell in love with coaching. I, I, I caught the bug and I'll be heading into my 35th season coming up here. And, and I tell my players this all the time, 35 years. And I, I've never worked a day in my life because <laughs> I just enjoy it so much. Mm. So that's how I caught the coaching bug. I love that. It's interesting too, because you mentioned, you know, influence, right. On young people. And I've heard people talk about work as worship or, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, ministry in the marketplace. I've heard has been words used and just opportunities to work in an environment, which isn't necessarily a church or a, a ministry environment that you would think, but at the same time, the impact that you can have, on others is clear. And I wondered, did you get that initially? Because for me, when I worked at ESPN, it took me a good decade to understand, wait a minute, this was my ministry field, if you will, to be able to work at ESPN. Did you get that right away? Or did that, is that something that kind of grew and you had to learn? You know, uh, your career a good point. Good point. I don't think I got it right away, but I, I grew with it as, as my career has, moved on and progressed and maybe I thought I had it right away but like anything you get you learn as you grow and through experience and uh but it certainly provides you a ministry and provides you that platform tell me how you got to Nebraska and I know we were talking beforehand and you coached for a few years as a high school coach and the the story that you just shared but then you became a grad assistant in Nebraska in the mid-90s and that was an opportunity to really catapult your career a little bit it sure was. Here's that story. Okay. So I'm at Delaware Valley College and uh, Dick Vermeil. Yeah. You know, coach Vermeil and uh, coach for the Eagles. My dad, the Eagles, friendship, relationship there. At this time, Coach Vermeil is out of broadcasting. I mean, out of coaching and he's broadcasting. That's right. And That's right. doing college games. And he would go around every weekend during the fall and give my resume to people trying to, you know, help me take the next uh, step in my career. Well, coach Vermeil is the, is the most optimistic guy I've ever met. Okay. And he would come back, Jason, from every Sunday, Monday and call me and say, listen, I dropped off your resume here. Expect a call. Okay. They're going to call you. I feel real good about that. Now this went on for a couple of years, you know, so, and I, I'd be sitting by the phone, you know, the cell phones weren't quite there yet, you know, in, 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 in the uh, early mid nineties, they're just coming on. And, of course. And every Monday, do I, okay, expect the call. I was at Tennessee this weekend doing their game. I was at Penn state doing their game. Finally, after however many times he goes, I was at the Nebraska, Oklahoma game. 
this weekend. Expect a call from Tom Osborne. Now, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't flinching by now to think that this actually is going to come through. <laughs> but sure enough, Jason, you know, that Monday, I sit by the phone and, and, and the phone rings and I pick it up. And I remember like it was yesterday. And it's like, hi, this is Mary Lynn Winnegar, Tom Osborne's administrative assistant. Can you take a call from Coach Osborne? I said, sure. And he gets on the phone and we talk a little bit. I fly out there two or three days later for an interview. And, and this was in uh, yeah, late November, early December. And then I load up everything and drive out there, uh, you know, in January after, after, after their bowl game and started in mid January. So that's, ex that's exactly how it happened. And I've never been out of the state of Pennsylvania. You know, so mm -hmm. here I am driving across the, halfway across the country to Lincoln, Nebraska. And those, uh, those three years were three of the best years of, uh, of my life what's on biggest, and off the field. What's the biggest lesson that you learned from Tom Osborne? I, I know Tom Osborne is in terms of watching him from afar as a man of integrity, as a man who loves Jesus and never was shy about his faith, but obviously a man who was, I mean, you got there and that was in the peak years in Nebraska. Yeah. They were winning some championships there and they had some really yeah. great teams so you were around him. What was some lessons or the lesson that you learned in watching him? And the oh, way he boy, I learned so many things, but probably just how strong he was in his faith and watching him and listening to him every single day for three years. I, I have notes on top of notes. And, and, and the biggest thing I learned was certainly how strong he is in his faith. And you asked earlier, Jason, about how you keep calm during stressful games and whatnot. Yeah. He was incredibly calm. He was the same every day. It could be the day before we start spring ball or the day before the, the, the two national championships that we won. He was the same person. And, uh, you know, just watching him and listening to him was so impactful. Um, in, in my coaching career, but also uh, in my walk with the Lord. As we wind down here with Clayton Carlin from Sam Houston State, let's remind everyone yet again, the 2020 FCS National Champions, uh, winning that back in May of 2021, a perfect 10-0 season for Sam Houston State, and Clayton Carlin is their defensive coordinator. I think about um, – coaching. And I like to ask this question and maybe because you listen to this show, you know where I'm going here, but coaches are constantly emptying the tank. They're giving all they can and the, the advice and the teaching and the coaching. And I always like to ask coaches, how do they stay filled? And that's not just in life, but certainly if you're a person of faith, how do you stay filled in your walk with God when you're pouring it all out on the field and, and coaching is a tough profession. I mean, we haven't mentioned, but you went to Buffalo, Villanova, New Mexico state, Bucknell, coastal Carolina, Sam Houston state now. So you've done this coaching, you know, I guess journey that your parents were a little concerned about because it's yeah. hard going from place to place, but how does your faith kind of, how do you stay connected with your faith during a long season? Are there people pouring into you podcasts like this one? Is it Bible study, you know, what is it that kind of keeps you refreshed and connected to God? Yeah. The first thing every morning that I do that I have to do, Jason, is I spend 30 to, you know, 45 minutes in prayer in, in the word. And, hmm. uh, and, and that's, I have to do that. That's, you know, I'm an, I get up early, go to bed. Uh, that's, you know, I'm not up late. I, I, I'm up very early uh, and I have to spend that 30 to 45 minutes in prayer reading scripture, uh, and spending that quiet time with the Lord. It just, it's, it energizes me and, uh, and it, it gets me going, uh, through the day for what we're, you know, whatever's going to come up. And, and, and I leave, I leave that prayer time so energized and, uh, and filled with the word of the Lord. And I have to have that time. I have to have that time. And then, uh, the other thing is, you know, I married a great lady and, yeah. uh, you know, again, I, I don't, there's no such thing as a coincidence. I told you how I ended up in Nebraska three years there, two national championships, but the best thing, uh, that happened to me there was I met my wife, Kathleen, 
and she's from the state of Nebraska. And I, I have no doubt that God had his hand in that because that's, you know, that's I, how did a guy get to Nebraska, you know? And then yeah. I truly believe the good Lord puts the right people in front of you in the right time in the right places. And uh, you talk about all the moving around we did and she's so steady and she's so strong and she inspires me every day and, 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 and with her walk too and with the Lord. So it's those things that time I have to have in the morning and I don't miss, I just can't miss it. It's, it's, it's to me is the best time of the day. It's quiet. There, there's no phones buzzing or ringing or beeping and, and no, nobody's up. Uh, you know, so it's that time with the Lord in, in, in the morning and then just being able to be married to such an incredibly strong woman, like, like my wife, Kathleen constantly fills me up. Yeah, I can echo the whole get up early in the morning time because that's when I need to as well. I'm up at 530 every day and yeah. I just need to get that time with God before everything kind of tries to distract me from that. Right. Like yep. the world, even working in ministry and working with Sports Spectrum, it's still work. And that can't replace my time with God. So I'm glad that you said that because I think it's more, it's so, so important for everyone to find their rhythm, but to yeah. find that time for me and for you, clearly it's, it's the morning. Um, as we wind down, what's the, what's the great lesson? We talked about lessons from people like, you know, Tom Osborne and, and others. What's the great lesson that God is teaching you right now? That's the question we close with usually on this show. What's the lesson that he's showing you right now today as you think about where God has brought you to and where you are now and where maybe you're headed? What's he showing you and teaching you? Yeah, I would say the word that comes to mind and that he's been teaching me and, that, and this is a challenge for me. And I would think a lot of people it's not a word that you use in athletics, per se, but uh, surrender, mm -hmm. surrender to his plan, surrender to his will. Uh, and, and do the best you can be a good and faithful servant um, because I, there's no doubt that's what God wants. Uh, be strong in your walk and be strong in your faith. Work hard, be a, be a great husband and be a great father and be a, the best coach I can be and, and, and the best teammate I can be. But at the end of the day, surrender, surrender to God's will and to God's plan and uh, because, you know, it's good. You, 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 it's it's as I say, the guys around here, God's undefeated. You know, he is right. undefeated right. and he doesn't make mistakes and he doesn't go, oops, or my bad. Uh, you know, so so surrender and be strong in your faith. And that's and that's that's not always easy, Jason. Right. Not right. always right. easy in the world of just to surrender and turn it over and. Uh, and, and, and to be strong in that faith and uh but you need to be and you need we need to I need to be strong in my faith and and trust in God's plan and and, and, and be faithful and uh doesn't mean it's going to be easy um you know because only faith that is tested can become great and uh you know so there'll be tests along the ways and but just surrender to God's will and surrender to God's plan for, for my life. Cause I know it's good. I know it's good. I like that. God's undefeated. Well, you guess what? So is Sam Houston state, at least last year when they went 10 yeah. and 0. we'll see if yeah. they can do a repeat performance here in the 2021 season. Either way, Clayton Carlin, we just appreciate you. Thanks for sharing your story here on sports spectrum. All the best to you. I hope you guys have a great year and uh, hopefully we'll catch up again down the road. Thank you, Jason. Blessings. And many thanks to Clayton Carlin for joining us here today on the show. And listen, I love talking to coaches, specifically football coaches. And that means as we release this in the latter part of summer, that football is right around the corner. And that brings a big smile to my face as I record this right now, knowing that just a couple of weeks, Clayton Carlin and the Sam Houston State Bearcats will be defending their national championship opening up their season September 2nd at Northern Arizona. And I love Clayton Carlin. He's got a great heart for Jesus. He's got a heart to serve. Clearly, he's a very good coach, helping lead his team to a national championship. And he's a dad to six kids, married to wife Kathleen. And wasn't it cool how he told the story of Dick Vermeil, the longtime Eagles coach, introducing him to Tom Osborne, which 
brings Clayton to Nebraska, which allows him to experience two national championships in Nebraska, but really to meet his wife, which sends him on a new path to become a husband and a dad. And now he's with Sam Houston State winning a 2020 FCS national championship. Pretty cool how God orchestrates this whole thing. And Clayton's a a great example of that. So we appreciate him for joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. And Clayton reached out to us via email to let him know, to let us know that he listens to this show. That's actually how we connected at first was that he just reached out to me on an email and said, hey, I love your program. Keep doing what you're doing. And then I invited him to be a guest on the show and that's how we got him. But that reminds me to remind you guys that if you have a guest idea, you are free to email me directly, jason at sportspectrum.com. If you have an idea for a guest that we should have here on the show, you can email me, jason at sportspectrum.com. And then do us a, a favor. And this is an important one, especially on Apple Podcasts. They just released a new uh, version of their podcast app. And we would love for you to become a fan, if you will, and to like the Sports Spectrum podcast and make that a podcast that you can listen to and subscribe to every single time we drop a new episode. That way, you never miss an episode. So make sure on Apple Podcasts, when you're there, that you follow us on the Sports Spectrum podcast. And it just helps get the word out. And then maybe tell someone about Sports Spectrum. We bring Jesus back into the sports conversation. And so much of what we've been able to accomplish over the past few years comes down to you guys listening and telling others about the work that we're doing. Use us as a resource to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone else. That's what we're about here at Sports Spectrum, bringing Jesus back into the sports conversation. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you'll join us next time right here on Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day, and see you soon.